All right. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different this week uh, for the Twin Flame connection. I will still do a reading uh, and I will give you maybe a little bit more information about that later on in this video. But what I really want to do is um, I want to sort of respond uh, to a lot of the comments that I see in Twin Flame. Uh, this has been years now. Twin Flame videos, mine and other people's. OK, and I want to kind of give you a roadmap of a healthy divine feminine versus a wounded divine feminine and how those play out. Now, I'm just going to put a little asterisk in the beginning of this video to say not every single divine feminine, ha it displays these features in the same way. All right. So some of us who are more air sign, fire sign might might lash out some of you know must might go into our brain and not talk to anybody but they are still exhibiting the same symptoms of healthy versus unhealthy okay wounded versus healthy we'll just talk about it that way okay so let's start with the wounded first uh, the reason i'm doing this is starting in january um we are doing an accelerate your ascension group it's going to be a weekly meetings a live call. We're going to talk all about ascension process, twin flame healing, getting to union. We're going to talk all about that, the, the spiritual path, all the stages you go through and how to handle it, not only how to handle it, but how to accelerate it. Okay. So you'll see that on the website, I will be making a special video to announce it. All right. So just know, just pay attention. If you haven't hit the little bell notification, make sure you do that so that when I'm putting out these videos, announcing these programs for 2023, you're going to be the first to hear about it. Okay. Okay. So the first thing I want to say about the wounded feminine is boundaries. You may, if, if you are experiencing uh, a wounded feminine, this is a person who doesn't have very good boundaries, meaning that they are not, they are allowing other people to swamp their needs and they're also projecting their needs onto other people. They are, this is the person who would call you up and spend two hours kind of dumping on you without really asking how you are or uh, really understanding that you, your time is valuable either. Okay. So, and if they do it consistently. Now, one thing I do want to say to you is a lot of these symptoms or signs, um, if they are episodic, meaning there's a stressor and then this person has these things. They are wounded in this moment or in this situation. But if they're like this in their whole life and everything, then there's bigger healing here that's needing to take place. I'm not downplaying episodic things. We all get stressed and we all we all have, you know, kind of lower vibration expressions of our needs at that time, like if we're not really conscious of it and we're just, you know, lashing out or whatever we're doing, uh, if you're experiencing this coming from another person, now you understand why. Okay. So there's a, a wounded feminine that's basically saying, I don't have any boundaries. So this person could also show up as someone who's oversharing. They're ta they're telling you everything, things that are like a little inappropriate to tell you, especially depending on your relationship. You know, if you're someone's coworker and they're telling you all about their sex life, you're like, ah, uh, I really don't want to know. <laughs> so, but that's a wounded feminine um, expression. Okay. So boundaries, this is a big deal. Overshares her emotions, overshares and has a limited ability to understand how it comes off with other people and also needing other people to kind of um, not needing other people, wanting other people to kind of dump on them so that they can be the caretaker and then they can be like, look at what a victim I am. All right. That is a wounded divine feminine. The next thing is they always look for external validation. So they don't have any internal ways of saying, Hey, you did it. Good job. They need other people to see them and go, wow, you're amazing. In order for them to feel amazing, even though they're amazing all by themselves, they don't believe themselves enough about that. They don't believe themselves that they are enough or they're great. Great. We don't believe ourselves to be okay. All right. If you're a wounded divine feminine, you're always looking for someone else to prop you up or something external, shopping, drinking, eating, something external to you. It doesn't even have to be a person. All right. This is a wounded feminine trait. And 
the validation, hear that word validation. So this is, this can also uh, be presented as I want someone to tell me I'm right. I want someone to prop me up. I want someone to say what a victim I, not a, what a victim I am, say, oh, you poor thing, right? I'm wanting that. Now, it's fine to be a person who has, you know, conversations and you tell somebody about what's going on with you, but you also have the ability to self-soothe and make yourself feel better. It doesn't all have to come from external sources, okay? So we're not saying, oh, you got to be a hermit. You can't be, no. And certain times in our life, our girlfriends, our woman friends, our friends of any kind, any stripe, any color are critical to our mental health. So I don't want you to think that I'm saying you have to cordon yourself off from people. But if there's a 100%, I always have to get validation from someone else to make myself feel better. A lot of times I think people do watch tarot readings to make themselves feel better. And like I said, nothing wrong with any of this, as long as there's a way for you to also do it for yourself or you're learning how to do it for yourself. Because I do think friends get sick of it if you dump and dump and dump, especially if you don't return the favor. Okay. So that's a divine feminine, a wounded divine feminine uh, trait. The third wounded divine feminine trait is, has something to do with insecurity. And this is a person who gets triggered a lot about something about themselves, whatever they value, if they value being seen as competent and smart and possessing knowledge and someone calls them stupid, that's a huge trigger for this person. If they are someone who is a healthy divine feminine, they'd just be like, oh, what do they know? I know what I'm talking about. They're just blah, 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 right? And you're still fine, you're still intact. But you might just get, a, if you're a wounded feminine, you get a sideways glance from someone who's like, oh, I'm sure you believe that, right? It's like destroys you for a day. That's a wounded feminine. The insecurity. Um, this is also shows up in the twin flame relationship as the divine feminine um, never trusting. Any, any, never trusting the journey, never trusting another person, never trusting the, the divine masculine, never. Okay. And the healing of that feels like I trust that it will all, that it will all work out for my best and highest good. Always like on that path of, all right, it's, it's that you, what you're doing is you're creating security for yourself when you're like, you know what? I, my relationship is with the universe. I am working with the universe. I am a hundred percent sure that I'm in alignment um, with that power with my higher power or source or God or what, whoever, whatever you, however you sort of work that through. It doesn't mean that every once in a while we don't have our insecurities. Of course we do. It's totally normal. But I'm saying to you again, if this is unconscious for people, if they're like, I'm not insecure, <laughs> like, okay. Um, if this is uh, someone who does this consistently, if this is someone who's be making this their personality, that's wounded. Okay. That's a wounded divine feminine. Um, the next one, number four is manipulative. All right. And this is very specific to each relationship that they have. For some people, it's killing with kindness. For other people, it's like they're powerful. They're running over somebody for another person. They're obsequious and, oh, you're so wonderful to me. Like whatever it is, as long as they get what they want, it's about not being direct. It's about getting someone to do something that you want them to do, especially if it's not their idea or if it's not something that they really want to do. And you're kind of like going, the, the, the wounded feminine will kind of find the way to get that person to do what you want. Now, again, we all have those things in our life where we're like, okay, this is how I have to deal with this person. This is how I have to deal with that person. But you are essentially authentic in each of those transactions, in each of the way you're dealing with people, uh, being a little bit more direct about your needs, uh, being a little bit more direct about what's going on with you or, um, or, hey, this is what I'm looking to do. What do you think? Is this a good idea? Would you like to do that too? Letting people know that you're not like trying to maneuver them. That's healthy. 
Okay. A, a wounded divine feminine is always trying to, you know, play the victim card or play the, you know, woe is me or blasting people with anger to get them to back down or whatever it is. It's, it's an indirect way of getting what you want. So that's a wounded, that's a wounded feminine. Um, the next one is they're excessively attached. Part of the twin flame journey is about non-attachment, which is different than just being detached. Like, I don't give a shit, right? Non-attachment is live and let live. Everybody does what they do for their own reasons. I'm not taking anything personally. That's non-attachment. It's, it's like, I, in order for me to be happy and peaceful and sane, I don't, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't mean that you're cold and unfeeling and that you'll have no uh, experience of when someone breaks up with you or when someone goes and marries someone else or something like that. But there is this sense of recognizing a thing and working through those emotions. That's why we're doing this uh, Accelerate Your Ascension uh, program, weekly program, because it doesn't mean you're not supposed to feel it just means that if you feel disappointed, if you feel upset, if you feel sad, hurt, angry, whatever those things are, to put it in the proper perspective and recognize that you are sovereign. You have your own power, your own feelings, your own supply of love and joy, your own connection to spirit. So in reality, even if it's a twin, if that person does something that um, sends you into this place of being, I'll never, I'll never love again, or this is never this, I'm never going to be able to get over this or something like that. Then you're giving your power away. Okay. And even in a twin flame connection, it's not healthy to do that. So it's also a process. It's not something that, uh, maybe we're consistently good at even. It's not something that we, uh, is our first go-to thing, but working on yourself and getting yourself healthy, it's going to be a lot easier to rebound and to stabilize yourself, you know, sort of, uh, anchor yourself again, feel your own love for yourself, feel connection to spirit, count your blessings. I, all these friends and my family's wonderful. And, you know, I got my two puppies and all of this kind of thing. Like, and not only that, but like, let's go back to the external validation. Internally, I'm fine. I'm good. I feel anchored. I feel like I have my own best cheerleader inside me, right? Whatever happens outside of me, I am my refuge. I am my own protector. I am my own stability. I am my own cheerleader. I am all those things. Because even in a marriage, even in the most intimate relationships, I'm not responsible for your uh, way of dealing with something, okay? Uh, I am responsible in terms of how I communicate and how I love and how I express my own needs. I'm responsible for that. But everybody is responsible for their own feelings and for their own ability to right themselves and to you know, not blame someone else, even if that's a twin flame. Right. I've, I've read a lot of comments about he makes me do this and she does this and that makes me this way. You're you're giving away your power when you're saying those things. You really are. So this part of the healing process is learning to uh, have sovereignty and have um, your own core anchor no matter what no matter what, be able to get back to that, be able to stabilize yourself, be able to self-soothe, be able to um, process the emotions and not get stuck in them. Big, important thing. Um, the next one is if they are desperate for love. A wounded divine feminine is someone who is all about, I am only real, I am only uh, good, I am only happy, when I have the love of this other person. You're all of those things. You can be all of those things. And then the love of that person is like the icing on the cake. It's not the cake though. You're the cake. 
And you know what? We eat on on frosted cake all the time. We call them muffins. Okay, so it's not, for those of you who eat muffins in the morning, you're really eating cake. I'm just saying, but you are the cake, right? You are the the core of that thing of your experience. And frosting is love and the the things that happen outside of us, right? That's the frosting. I guess I'm hungry. Um, so if someone is desperate for love and feels like they're not a full whole person, which used to happen a lot more before we became aware that we can do this for ourselves, right? I hear, I used to, when I was growing up in the seventies, there was a lot of my soulmate is the, correct, the other half of myself, but I don't feel whole without this person. Now that says to me that there's a lot of work still to be done in you because you are a whole person. And you can become a whole person, even if these things are still unconscious for you or if you're experiencing them in a way that eh, um, isn't so good for yourself. You're, you know, you're punishing yourself by, you know, sleeping around or eating a lot of donuts or binge watching <laughs> Downton Abbey. I don't know. But like whatever you're doing that's taking that, you know, we all have to we all have to have self-soothing, but like, let's not go overboard into a place where it might hurt us. Okay. Um, uh, the next, so th that kind of leads me to the last one, which is about sacrificing yourself. And when you get into a place of hurt that you lash out and you lose a job, um, when you, or you are so underwater by what's going on around you that you can't cope or you, you, you know, you don't show up to work for a couple days, or you don't do your creative work, you don't meditate, whatever whatever you're doing that you used to do that was healing and healthy for you, you stop doing. And um, that's really sacrificing yourself. Also giving your power away to other people, letting it be solely in somebody else's care, your, your mental mindset or your belief uh, in yourself is solely based on what other people think of you. Then you're basically sacrificing yourself. And that gets kind of back to boundaries, right? Boundaries is one of the biggest things we can do. Good fences make good neighbors. You're going to have to do for yourself. The twin flame journey, the central message of Buddhism is not every man for himself. And the central message of the twin flame journey is not that they're going to fix me or being in union is going to fix me in some way. The fixing happens first. Otherwise, it's just more triggers and more expressions of I'm going this way, you're going that way and drama, 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 all of that. When someone gets to the place of wanting to be healthy, what happens is they are working on the health of themselves and it can't help but help their twin, especially if that's not the reason you're doing it. If you're doing it to become a healthier divine feminine, it is automatically going to benefit your divine twin automatically. And if you're doing it for that reason, kind of negates the, the process. It, it kind of wipes out intention matters. Intentionality matters. Okay. So a healthy feminine has good boundaries. They're very loving and supportive. They're able to give love and receive love. They're able to you know, when something goes wrong in their life, they're able to self-soothe their self. They're able to have conversations with people and work through what my next steps are. It's not about that other person sopping up your feelings. It's about a sounding board or it may be some of some of you might hear yourself say, listen, I just need to say this out loud so I can hear what I'm talking about or I can hear my feelings or, or I can process a little bit more. There's therapists for that. There's also best friends for that. But again, be mindful of not just constantly lo loading your friends with this stuff because it will impact the relationship in a very negative way. So be able, when you are a healthy feminine, you are able to be vulnerable, able to share yourself without worrying that someone's going to harpoon you because it's like, um, I, you know, I can take care of myself, but I'm, I'm being vulnerable because vulnerability is where love grows. So even with our friends, family, any relationships we have, the ability for us to say, uh, yeah, I, you know, I kind of messed this up. I feel, ugh, I feel like sick about this. And, you know, share your feelings with someone without having them be the one who has to fix it 
or something like that. Like sometimes you don't need other people to fix stuff. Okay. I'm a big fixer. When I, when someone comes to me and they say, Hey, this is a problem. I automatically go, okay, how can I fix it? Very masculine tendency, but it is caring. It is based in the intention of love. It's just that everybody has their own way about doing these things. Okay. Everybody has their own way. So being vulnerable and compassionate and loving can look a lot different coming from a water sign, a Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, than coming from an air sign, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, fire signs, earth signs. We all do things differently, right? We, being vulnerable and compassionate and authentic is personal to who you are. Okay. And learn as a healthy feminine, learn who to trust with that. Because if you find, if you um, are dealing with a divine masculine who is not able to be trustworthy with your own, with your needs and feelings, then I suggest that that's not the right person. Now, it doesn't mean that eventually they can't sort of come out of it, right? And be the one who is, who is uh, a healthy uh, divine masculine. I'm going to do a video on healthy divine masculine too, okay? Um, but at the same time, it really is uh, knowing that's a boundary, right? That's a boundary. If you're knowing someone that you can't trust, if you can't trust them, if you say things that are your um, needs or feelings or whatever, and they belittle them or they abuse you about them or something like that, you can't trust them with those feelings, okay? You can't trust them with those feelings. So the last thing I want to say is one of the most important parts of being a divine feminine if you want to sum up this whole thing is being able to ask for what you need, being able to self soothe, being able to process through and being your own best cheerleader. Okay. All of those things require boundaries. They require a conscious awareness of what's going on with you. They require a sense of I'm stepping through this in a healthy way. If you push down feelings or if you blurt them at people and you just keep blurting them at people, if you do any of those things, then you're not really processing them. You're not working through the healing process, which is again, is something we're going to do in January and at, and on right. January, all 2023. So I hope this uh, video was helpful for you to understand the difference between a healthy divine feminine and a wounded divine feminine. All right. I don't even want to say an unhealthy divine feminine. I just want to say a wounded one because a lot of these things come from a lack of awareness, a lack of consciousness about why this is happening. So if you're lashing out at people, you might want to try and understand what the trigger is. Okay. So we'll talk about that in the group. Okay. I hope this was helpful for you. If you like this kind of video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell so that you get notified anytime I do videos. And also I'd like to hear, please drop a comment below. What do, how do you feel about what I said? And also what has been your experience? Has there been a time when you have consciously moved from wounded into healthy? And what did that feel like? And did it stick? Or was it just, you know, okay, today, this is what I'm doing. I'd like to hear. I'd like to hear. I'd like to know. All right. Much love to you. All right. I hope you enjoyed that video. If it was helpful to you, please consider liking this video and sharing it with anybody who might have a need for similar kind of information. And if you like this video, check out these videos. <laughs>